so I hope the group is ready for today's presentation. Um, okay, if you are ready, we will start our presentation um, in about two minutes. Okay, please be ready. Yes, we can see. We can see uh, clear. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me also? Yeah. Yes, yes. Can yes. hear you. Can you? Okay, thank you. Uh, shall we start? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Shahid, and today our group will present the topic of the power system security. Uh, now, uh, until now, our main concern was uh, minimizing the cost of operating a power system. Uh, but an important factor in the operation of a power system is to maintain the power system security. And this system security involves practices uh, designed to keep the system operating when the components fail. Uh, for example, if uh, a generating unit uh, may switch off uh, from the line because of the auxiliary equipment failure. So if we have a proper uh, maintaining, uh, the maintaining the spinning reserve, uh, the remaining units of the system can make up the defici uh, deficiency and uh, it will not drop the frequency too much. And uh, we also do not have to shed any load. Uh, so like that, if we have a transmission line failure, or maybe by a storm or by a natural calamity, so by uh, so if a generator is uh, automatic relaying by switched off, so if we have a proper flow in the transmission line, the remaining transmission line can uh, take the increasing load and uh, still will remain uh, in the limits. Now the system security uh, can be uh, broken down into the three major uh, function. Uh, the system monitoring is the first uh, and it is uh, the most important of the three. And it is uh, about the, uh, giving the uh, up-to-date information on the condition of the power system. Now the second is the contingency analysis. Uh, in the contingency analysis, uh, uh, the result of this type of uh, analysis allow the system to be operated defensively. So these are the programs uh, uh, on a model of a power system and uh, are used to study the outage events. And uh, these, uh, these uh, sound the alarm to the operators uh, when any potential overload or any over limit uh, happen in a power system. Now the third is the security constrained uh, optimum power flow and in this function a uh, contingency analysis is combined with an uh, optimal power flow uh, which uh, uh, seeks to make changes to the optimal dispatch of generation uh, as well as uh, other adjustments. Now a security, uh, security analysis study which is uh, uh, run in operations center must be executed very quickly. So in order to be uh, any useful for the operators, so there are uh, three ba basic ways to accomplish this. Now the first one is to study the power system with the approximate uh, but very fast algorithms. So these are very uh, fast algorithms uh, and uh, these are using the linear approximating models. Uh, and uh, it can uh, cover all the possible cases uh, that can happen in a power system. Now the second one is the traditional uh, uh, algorithm. And uh, in this uh, traditional al uh, algorithm, we only use the most important cases that can happen. Now the third is a computer system made up of multi processors uh, or a vector uh, processor for, uh, for to gain the speed uh, uh, of, uh, of a large section of uh, cases. If, if we have a large section of cases, so a computer uh, program will help uh, in cover these cases. Now, the linear approximating model uh, has been used for many years and uh, those under various names uh, like D-factor method, linear sensitivity method, or DC power flow method. So this is uh, one of the easiest way and uh, this approach uh, this approach is uh, very useful in approximating analysis of the effect uh, if an if of each outage when needed 
and uh, the, and the problem is that uh, the uh, the study of th study, studying thousands of possible outages uh, become very difficult to solve and uh, when it, uh, when it, especially if it is required to present the result quickly so it is one of the easiest uh, uh, ways to uh, have a quick uh, calculation of possible overload uh, so in this case we use the linear sensitivity factor and also uh, it is uh, useful for reaching an approximate analysis of each outage and uh, these uh, linear sensitivity factors uh, show the approximate change in the flows of the uh, changes in generation on the network configuration and uh, they are derived from the uh, dc power flow now but uh, as this method is very useful in uh, quick approximation it has also its limitations and it is has all the limitations attributed to the dc power flow and uh, also it has the only uh, accuracy about 5% and also there is uh, no knowledge of the MVR flow on the uh, on the buses and also about the voltages on the uh, voltages on the buses now the linear sensitivity factors uh, can be of uh, two type uh, generation shift factors and uh, line out distribution factors now here shall we uh, describe the uh, generation shift factors and uh, the generation shift factors are um, designed designated by this formula uh, and in this formula we can see that uh, it is the ratio of the power flow and uh, the uh, change in the generation of the power now this uh, this is how we can calculate the generation factors uh, now uh, we will assume that uh, we have a, a generator which is generated by pi and uh, it has lost uh, its uh, power so we can equate it to pi naught now uh, now from the previous formula we can derive the equation for the uh, new power flow model uh, and furthermore uh, uh, on each line outage uh, flow uh, can be compared to its limits and those exceeding uh, can be flagged for the uh, alarm so then the operator can turn them off and this uh, enables the personnel to know the, any overload in the line now the second type of uh, uh, sensitive factor is the line outage distribution factor and uh, uh, it is shown by this formula and it is designated by the power flow and uh, uh, the original power flow in the uh, in the line now by pre calculating the uh, line outage distribution factor a very fast possible uh, a very fast procedure uh, can be set up uh, to test all the lines in the network for the overload and the outage of a particular line now this procedure can be uh, repeated uh, for uh, outage of each line in turn with overloads uh, reported to the operation personnel uh, in the form of a, in the form of an alarm now using the uh, generator and line outer distribution factor as described earlier in a program uh, in the slides uh, one can program uh, uh, these uh, by in a digital computer to execute a contingency analysis uh, uh, and to study the power of, of the power system now we will see the generation sh uh, shift factor uh, but uh, we'll begin with a linear load flow model now this formula uh, this formula is a standard matrix uh, calculation for the dc power flow dc load flow model now since the dc load flow model is a linear model as shown here uh, we can calculate the permutations uh, uh, about a given set of system by using the uh, same model now but now if we add incremental changes to this formula uh, we can get this this formula if we uh, add incremental changes uh, now in this uh, formula we have uh, assumed that uh, uh, the swing bus uh, in the uh, the swing on the uh, the swing bus is equal to the sum of injections and uh, all other uh, permutation on the bus are zero so thus uh, uh, if you are interested in changes in the bus phase angle for a given set of uh, changes in the bus for injections we can use this formula now suppose that uh, we are interested in calculating the uh, 
sensitive factors and uh, uh, on on any generator uh, of a bus uh, we can set this uh, by using the set uh, permutation on the bus to plus one and all other buses to uh, minus one that is the reference and we'll use that reference uh, reference bus now we can we can find out uh, by using this uh, matrix uh, uh now from the previous uh, slides we can we can see that the generation shift factors uh, and uh, find uh, we can find out uh, the uh, uh, we can find out the uh, generation shift factor from this formula but for this uh, for this uh, power flow uh, power flow mod, uh, power flow equation we can we can first see how this uh, uh, this uh, this converted into this now if uh, we assume that uh, if we are given a transmission line with the uh, like uh, if we if we are transmission line uh, with this formula and uh, we have uh, uh, there is a maximum amount of uh, power flow from like you can see there is a maximum power flow on this This is the uh, maximum power flow on the uh, generator uh, on the bus, and uh, we will show the minimum power flow from this equation. Now, if we further translate. Uh, uh, this formula for for the uh, understanding we can uh, show it uh, by using this uh, equation now here the this x p q is the uh, line reactance uh, on the on the buses and this is the angle between the two buses now we will use this uh, uh, power f uh, power flow uh, uh, equation here, and we will drive it to like this. Yes. Now, now we will uh, take out the line reactants uh, outside, and uh, uh, we will drive uh, the the formula. Now here we can see that we have drive it to x n uh, where it shows the nth delta vector uh, uh, nth delta vector and xmi shows the mth delta vector uh, on on this side and xl is the we have the line reactance now if we model this uh, uh, if we want to model we can uh, model line outage uh, and uh, we will add, uh, we will do this by adding two power injections on the bus n and the bus m now before the before we inject the power we can we can see that there is a uh, power flow on the line k designated by p and m and uh, these are the two circuit breakers now we can see that these are closed uh, but as we dropped uh, two power injections on the bus n and bus m at here we can see that the circuit breakers uh, uh, circuit breakers uh, have been opened and the power between the two line is uh, become zero and the line k becomes zero now uh, this uh, these circuit breakers are not actually open but uh, due to the sudden change in the power this this uh, this is uh, uh, assumed uh, this is shown like uh, it has opened and uh, if we change if we designate the power on the bus n by the delta pn and the power flow uh, in from this line is uh, pnm and the power flow uh, change in the power flow on the bus m is the delta pm uh, we can uh, show it by using the this uh, this uh, this power flow and uh, from this uh, this uh, change if we add these two formulas we can show that uh, we can see that uh, if we add this then the power flow on the buses uh, looks like an outage now we can see that the circuit breakers are actually closed but the power flow in this 
इस इस साइड ही जीरो सो इफ द सो द लाइन के इज वी कैन सी दैट इट्स फर्स्ट वी फर्स्ट दैट इट वाज एट नॉर्मल पोजीशन बट एट दिस पॉइंट वी एडेड टू पावर इंजेक्शन एंड फ्रॉम दिस टू पावर इंजेक्शन द पावर ऑन द बस एन एंड एम द पावर फ्लोइंग ऑन दिस टू बस इज बिकम जीरो and uh, we can see the final picture here on from this side uh, thank you uh, my time is over uh, now my friend will carry on from here good driver if you have uh, any question uh, you can ask now or if you have not question uh, my friend will carry on from here Hello everyone. Yes, we can hear hear you. Please continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> today my topic is for sensitivity factor in power systems, and uh, let me give you a brief intro about the sensitivity factor and. Uh, a uh, security analysis program is run in a load dispatch center very quickly to help the operators this can be attempted by carrying out an approximate analysis and using a computer system having multiple processors or retro processors for speedy analysis the system may be adequately described and an equivalent should be used for neighbors connected through tie lines we can eliminate all non violation cases and run complete exact program for critical cases only this can be achieved by using techniques such as contingency selection or contingency screening or contingency ranking thus it will be easy to warn the operation staff in advance to enable them to take corrective action if one or more outages will result in serious overloads or any violations one of the simplest way to present a quick calculation for possible overload is to imply network linear sensitivity factor in a power system this sensitivity factor in power system give the approximate change in line flows for changes in generation in the system and can be calculated from the dc load flow yeah types of sensitivity factor there are mainly two types of sensitivity factor in a power system the first one is the generator shift factor and the second one is the line outage distribution factor the generator shift factor alpha l i r defined as alpha l i is equal to delta f l over delta t g i where the delta f l is equal to the change in megawatts power flow on line l when a change in a generation and the delta p g i takes place at the i th basis Here it is assumed that the delta P G I is fully compensated by an equal and opposite change in generation at the slat reference bus, with all other generators remaining fixed at their original power generation. The factor alpha L I then gives the sensitivity factor in power system of the earth line flow to a change in generation at I th basis. let us now look at the outage of a large generating unit and assume that all the lost generation p not gi would be supplied by the slat bus generation then the delta 
टी जी आई इज इक्वल टू माइनस टी नॉट जी आई एंड द न्यू पावर फ्लो ऑन ईच लाइन कोड बी कैलकुलेटेड यूजिंग अ प्री कैलकुलेटेड सेट ऑफ एल्फा फैक्टर्स एज गिवन एफ एल इज इक्वल टू एफ एल नॉट प्लस एल्फा एल आई डेल्टा टी जी आई फॉर ऑल लाइन्स where the fl is equal to power flow on the else line after the failure of ith generation ith generators and fl not is the power flow on the else line before the failure or post contingency power flow the values of line flows obtained from this equation can be compared to their limits and those violating their limits can be informed to the operators for necessary control action the generator shift sensitivity factor in power system are linear estimate of the change in the line flow with the change in power at a bus thus the effects of simultaneous changes on a given number of generating buses can be computed using the principle of superposition let us assume that the loss of the i generation is to be made up by governor action on all generators of the interconnected system and pick up in proportion to their maximum megawatt ratings thus the proportion of generation pick up from unit k would be beta k i is equal to pg k maximum over submission m pg m maximum here the pgm maximum is the maximum megawatt ratings for m generator and the beta ki is the proportionality factor for pick up on kth unit when the ith unit fails and for checking the else line flow we may write this equation like uh, fl is equal to fl not plus alpha li delta pgi minus sigma alpha lk beta ki delta pgi in this equation it is assumed that no unit will violate its maximum limit for unit limit violation algorithm can be easily modified similarly the line outage distribution factors can be used for checking if the line overloads when some of the line are lost and the line outage distribution factor is defined as dli is equal to delta fl over fi not where dli is the line outage distribution factor when monitoring else line after an outage of ith lines and the delta fl is the change in megawatt flow on the else line and f i not is the post contingency line flow on ith lines if the pre contingency line flow on line l and i the power flow on line l with line i out can be found out employing d factor fi is equal to f fl is equal to fl not plus d dl i fi not here fl not and fi not is the pre contingency and pre outage flows on lines l and i respectively and the fl is the power flow on else line with i line out thus we can check quickly by pre calculating d factor all the lines for overloading for the outage of a particular line this can be repeated for the outage of each line one by one and overload can be found out for corrective action it may be noted that a line flow can be positive or negative hence we must check f against 
minus FL maximum as well as FL maximum. Line flows can be found out using telemetry system or with state estimate techniques. If the network undergoes any significant structural change and the sensitivity factor in power system must be updated. Thanks. May I start now? Yeah. You can start your presentation. Yes, please continue. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. So, uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Salman Mozza. So, now from, I, I am, I am uh, carrying on the next topic. The, previously, my two colleagues define you the mm -hmm. basics and derivations of sensitivity factor and the importance of power system security. So my part from here is to start from here. Can you uh, see the screen? Can you all see yes. the screen? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So my topic starts from the generate, uh, generation shift sensitive factor. So why we are uh, using generation shift sensitive factors, linear sensitivity factors? Uh, why we need to do this? Because uh, all systems are interconnected system, so if uh, and in an interconnected system, if one generator on any uh, transmission line fail, uh, the impact on the all transmission line will occur. Maybe the overloading can occur or the short shortage or any fault can occur, which can damage the system uh, uh, badly. So let's start with the uh, definitions of generation shift sensitivity factor. What is it showing that a factor to be applied to a generator expected change in output to determine the amount of flow contribution means whenever the generator is uh, not uh, is go going to fail what will be the uh, flow of the contribution uh, what will the flow on the transmission line occur when the, any of the generator work fail so basically all the introduction and the importance has uh, already given by Sahir and uh, 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 Shiraj so let me tell you about some uh, mathematical interpretation so what we are basically doing over here that we are checking the generator shift and line outage distribution factor. Uh, how we are considering the impact on the generator shift factors of line L. Salman, you have paused the screen. Yes, Salman. The screen is paused. Uh, now it's okay? Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. So, what basically we are considering, the, uh, we are saying that uh, we uh, consider the impact on the generator shift on of line l and bus i we are, uh, when line k has been taken out of service so we are basically we are taking these two consideration when the line k has been given out so what will be the impact so let us check the uh, mathematical interpretation basically these two are uh, this will be the compensated generation uh, shift factor but how it will come let me uh, let me tell you as uh, Shiraz and Shahir already told you about, the generator, uh, generation shift factor, what is basically this, that uh, the uh, generation shift factor is equals to change in flow over change in power. It's flow of line and generating units of power. So if we solve this for the uh, change in flow, uh, we will get generation shift factors in term of power like this. Okay, and then uh, line outage distribution factor. We already know, as uh, here and uh, Shah tell you about this, that was uh, a change in flow over line A and change in flow over K. So uh, when we solve for change in flow over line L, because we are considering the line L and generating I, so we will get the uh, uh, equation like this. 
Moving further, <coughs> we said as we discussed, generator shift sensor factors are linear. Estimate change in flow with a change in power at both bus. So we can the effect is except effect can be calculated by using superposition. And what we do in superposition, we add both. So when we add uh, add both in a term of change in flow of line L, so we will get equation like this. This is basically this equation. Change in flow of L. Alpha uh, A L I del P I plus the uh, distribution factors and change in flow of K. We can write change in flow of K in term of power because uh, flow of K has been taken out. So what will be the uh, power side? It will be like because we are considering uh, considering that generate uh, generating unit as well. So generator will be becoming the bus uh, the generator or you can say bus will be remain the same on the i one. So we will get like this factor change in fk will be equal to aki del pi so here it is change in fk del uh, aki del pi what we are doing further <coughs> we can see here there we can change the value of del fk means change in flow of k because it has been taken out and we have uh, given that uh, value for change in fk is equal to a k i del p i so we just replace this in this equation and we will get the equation like this the final equation we will get for generation shift uh, factor so it will be equal to change in flow of line l uh, a l i plus distribution l k a k i into change in power i th unit because there is a power uh, we can we now extract uh, the flow of uh, k line because it has been taken out of service so all the equation is now telling us about the change in flow of line l and uh, bus i so this equation basically is showing us the compensated generation shift factor because we have compensated the uh, equations uh, and we have taken out the uh, line k so uh, this was generation shift effect uh, sensitivity factor Moving further, we uh, check how what is uh, we want to know more about shift factors and generator participation factor. What is this? So let me tell you about more this. The generator shift sensitivity factors are linear estimate of the change in flow uh, in in flow with a change in power at bus. So basically, it's a linear change. Whenever uh, one thing is changing linearly, the other thing will be changing at the same time. So the most what the effects of simultaneous changes on several generating buses can be calculated use, uh, uh, using superposition, as I already calculated the previous one. So if uh, any of the generator buses are failing, so we can cal calculate the estimate estimated values or predefined values at the same time by using superposition. So what we are going as we are considering suppose that the loss of generator bus on bus I were compensated by government X action on machine throughout the interconnected system so what will happen we are getting another proportion generation uh, proportion <coughs> or proportion uh, of generation pickup means if any of the generator is failing and what will be the uh, other generator is uh, telling us about the what it, uh, how much power it will be provided and how much will be the flow in the transmission line if one of the generator fails so this equation tells us about that that's rho j i is equal to p j max and uh, and the summation of k but k is not equal to one p k max D here both uh, j and i are units okay we can see p k max maximum megawatt waiting for the k as we already discussed and uh, say tell you about that there's a limitation of this method we can only uh, accepting the megawatt values not mbr because it's a method limitation so p k max maximum megawatt waiting for the k and rho j i is, a, is a basically a proportionality factor what uh, proportionality factor for what for picking up on generating unit j when unit i fails so this equation basically tells us about the proportion of generation pick up from un, uh, unit j how it will be uh, if one of the generator is failing uh, how much power or proportionality factor will be applied on the other generator so we can calculate from here and there's another uh, equation Wait, uh, sorry for the equation. Any questions for this part? No, sir. I am actually ex explaining or my part is not over yet. Okay. So, to, uh, uh, as we discussed that <coughs> to test the 
No, I mean line L. Line. Oh, Salman, your screen is paused. Is it okay now? Salman, yes. unpause your screen. Okay. Wait, let me check. Is it okay now? Yes. It's okay now. Yeah, it's okay now. I can see your screen. Okay. To test the flow on line L under the assumption that all generators in the interconnection participate in making up the loss. So uh, what basically we are uh, checking over here that if one of the, uh, we are actually assuming the flow, if uh, we are actually pre-calculating the values, if any of the line fails, what will be the, how much will be the flow on the line? So we can calculate by using this formula. But here is a limitation that this assumes that no unit will actually hit its maximum. Means its mag uh, any of the generator will uh, should not reach its maximum value. But if there is any uh, if the generator is uh, reaching their maximum value, so we need to uh, take another al algorithm. So <clears throat> there is a limitation on this uh, method to solve that the generator which are uh, actually supplying over the another line. It should not reach its maximum value. Moving further uh, for the example, this example, <coughs> what is it basically saying that using uh, it is giving the table line table its per unit ejections values, and this is a basically a six bus network uh, six, uh, six bus network system. It is saying that find the generator shift factors and line distribution factors. As uh, both of uh, Shiraz and uh, Shahi tell you about the generator shift factors formulas and line distribution factors formulas but i uh, i will uh, tell you uh, i will also tell you about this that we have uh, been seen that what basically generator uh, generation shift factor using the formula below what is basically this is the generation shift factor formula so we are going to use this formula in this problem to find out the gener generation shift factor so moving further what is basically it is showing that the factor for a unit C outage on line 9 is. So we need to calculate the <coughs> factor for unit 3 outage. What will be the if, uh, its impact on line 9 is. Can you see the screen, all of you? Yes. The screen is visible to all of you? Yes. Okay. So uh, what basically we are doing here? It is also so, uh, it, it is uh, the the uh, problem is solved, but I have solved some in detail. The factor for a unit three outage on line nine is what we basically we are using the formula. Which formula? You see, see here, A L I is equal to one over X L X L I minus X M I. So <coughs> what is basically here uh, L N M and I. So we first find the that L is basically showing the line, line number nine, and I is basically a unit, uh, unit three. So L is equal to nine, I is equal to three, and N is equal to three, and M is equal to six. N and M are buses. So where we find the, these values, N is equal to three, M, M is equal to six, we can find it over here. That line nine. Can you see this line nine? Line line is connected between buses three and six, and its reactance value is zero point one zero. So by putting these values in the given formula, we get the equation like one over x nine because line is nine, and my, uh, this uh, small x basically is showing the reactances, and the uh, <coughs> big x uh, capital X is showing the matrix values. How it will really come? I am telling you that also. One over x nine means it's a reactance value. 1 over uh, x 3 3 means the matrix value minus x 6 3 so let me tell you the values now <coughs> going back to the given data we can see that line 9 means its reaction value is 0 0.10 so 1 over x 9 basically it will become 0 0.10 and we have to uh, see uh, the x 3 comma 3 value means third row and third column we have been provided with the matrix x so we will see the value x three comma uh, three three uh, x the third row and third column we will find over zero point one six five nine zero. So here you can see zero point one six five nine zero. Seeing further x six three, so six 
rows and the third column 0 0.12895 so when we <coughs> solve this we will get the value 0 0.37 basically this is a factor for unit 3 when unit 3 output is on line 9 so this will be the per unit value we can also see it in, in the given table that there is a line 9 and i third person so there is 0 0.37 for the easiness or understanding of your, I have solved one or two more examples about the generator six factors. You can, as you can see, the factor for unit two. Now I am on unit two, and the line is four. So how I will calculate? I will use the same formula, but here line is four and I means bus is two. So by putting values in this, I uh, I got the result as a four two. 0.05444 now which is line line 4 and unit 2 we can match the values line 4 and unit 2 here you can see line 4 and it is unit 2 the value we are getting 0 0.05 so we can see what value we get basically near to 0 0.05 and another example for bus 1 on line 6 so bus 1 on line 6 what we are giving bus 1 uh, this is basically bus one line six. We are getting the value zero. So n and m values we can find over here, but what we are getting in final bus uh, is a six one is again zero. So is it is it clear to all of you? Can you solve this problem now? Is there any difficulty? Okay, okay. So moving further. Uh, generator generator shift factor is clear now we are calculating the line outage distribution factor what this is as this is the formula we will use the for distribution uh, line outage distribution factor okay so this will be the formula we are using what is basically here it is saying the factor for line 4 outage on line 9 is so now line 4 and line 9 so there is a big difficulty so I have calculated this again so for your easiness. <coughs> First we will check that where is line 9 is connected and where is line 4 is connected means with which buses. We can find out it in also in a given table. So going again back to the given data. So we can see line <coughs> one second. My voice is clear to you. So we can see line four, uh, line four <coughs> first. So line four is connected between line uh, bus two and bus three. Uh, its rejection value is zero point two five. Okay, means L four uh, uh, X four will value will be zero point two five, and uh, uh, and and uh, M value will be two and three. So it's line four. And what uh, about the line nine? Line nine we are getting it is connected between the bus three and six. So its i and j value will be 3 and 6 and its rejection value will be x9 0 0.1 so i have also mentioned in my work which i solved for your easiness as you can see as line 9 is connected buses uh, between buses 3 and 6 here l is equal to 9 i is equal to 3 and j is equal to 6 as line 4 is connected between buses 2 and 3 here k is equal to 4 n is equal to and m is equal to 3 so by putting these values in this given formula we will get the equation like this which is basically the same as this one and by putting uh, we will uh, how we find these values so we again go to this uh, back to the matrices values <coughs> back over here and we will uh, uh, find the rejections values from here uh, from the given table and the uh, uh, matrices value from this matrices so after putting these values in the given equation we find the result is minus 0 0.62 basically and what i have found over here the same as minus 0 0.62 so we can also find it over here that line 9 <coughs> minus 0 0.62 okay so we can also find it over here that uh, how <coughs> the uh, Every data is given over here, like we have previously so previously solved about the uh, different outage of 
uh, units like one, two, three. So here it's about the line. So we can for solve for different lines as well. So previously we have solved for line four out is on line nine. We can also solve this on line three on line nine. So uh, we will get the different values and the complete data is over here. So you can find it over here. So what we have solved line nine and line four, you can find the data is over here minus zero point six two. Is it clear to you all? So I move further. Is there, is there any confusion? Everyone? So yes, yeah, I think it's clear. Yes, it's, okay. Yes, it's good Well explained. Okay. So let's move further. So there is another consider the generator outage on bus C with all pickup of lost generation coming from the generator on bus one. And there is uh, now again we have to find the new flow. This uh, formulas are also covered by the uh, by Shahir and Taha. Oh, sorry, Shahir and Shiraz. I will tell you more about it. I am just uh, calculating the values. So it is what is basically showing the calculate the post outage flow means post on the on line two from bus one to bus four. So the line two is basically connected from bus one to bus four. What is basically showing base case flow on line two one to four forty three point six megawatts. So how we can find where from we get this forty three point six megawatts. So for this we have to go for uh, to go a picture. Basically, it is shown in a figure. Uh, in a, it is taken from the book, so we can find all the <coughs> things from where. So, what is basically it is showing? Line two. Line two is connected from bus one to bus four. So, basically, this is bus one. This is uh, bus four. So, as uh, in this chart, we uh, I uh, Shahid told you about that there is a limitation in this method that we are only calculating the megawatts, not MVR. So you can find it over here that MBAR is symbol is like this and megawatt symbol is like this. So uh, what we need to calculate megawatt values. So uh, base left base case flow on line two will be equal to 43.6 megawatt. So here it is going 43.6 megawatt. Okay. So this was the base uh, base case flow on line eight. <coughs> Sorry, on line two. And now base case generation at bus three. Uh, now we are uh, first uh, previously we see that uh, base case low and now we are uh, checking the generation at bus three. So how we will get this is the bus three on the top and it is showing that sixty megawatt it is going over bus, bus three. So we find it over here also and the generation shift factor. We can again solve the generation shift factor uh, the same values but. For the uh, for easiness, uh, we can check it from the table. What is basically this A two three, okay? Line two and uh, generator three. So we can check it over here. Line two generator three. Line two generator three. It's basically minus zero point two nine. Okay, so there is the value. So it is here also minus 0 0.29. So we find it over here or we can also calculate like the same as shown you today. So the new flow, new flow will be like the base case flow, previous flow. Plus we will uh, multiply the generation shift factor with the del PI means base case generation. So here it is written as minus 60. So as in is discussed about or by the here in his slides, that whenever the outage is come, so we will show the uh, power and uh, ith uh, power uh, buses like minus pi means the change in pi is equal to minus p of i. So the, this is the equation. So when we get the new flow, it will be equal to 61 megawatt. You understand this problem? Any difficulty? We all? <coughs> Continue, please. Okay. Yes. Moving further. <clears throat> now, previously we find uh, solve for the generation shift factor. Now we are solving for uh, line eight. Line, means fourth of the line. Line out is the case. And now it is showing that line eight is connected between three to five, and line nine is connected between three to six. Now, basically, what we need to uh, check base case flow. Now we are checking the flow on line eight, 
again going to the same picture line 8 where this line 8 is connected between 3 to 5 so we check the bus 3 to 5 this is bus 3 and this is 5 so this is the line coming over here so if we check th this is the line uh, go, uh, megawatt power going to bus 5 the 43.8 going to 6 but uh, we are not concerned with that so we are just taking the power flow 19.1 going from bus 3 to bus 5 so we connect uh, we make it over here 19.1 megawatt checking line 9 it is connected between 3 to 6 3 and 6 so this is the second value 43.8 3 to 6 it is connected over here line out is distribution factor again uh, the uh, uh, again if it will it will be solved by the given uh, formula or we can check it from the uh, <coughs> given table USA table P98 sorry over here we can stick over line 8 and line 9 so it is here 0 0.60 we can find it over here uh, the value over here or we can use the same procedure to find it over find it out <coughs> so now checking the new flow uh, new flow will be the previous flow <coughs> base case on line 9 plus multiply by uh, uh, line out distribution factor multiply by the base of its case flow on line 8 so when we will multiply it we will get 55.26 megawatt so this is all from my presentation uh, in which i told you about the distance factors and the some numericals i explained to you if you find any of the difficulties in this you can ask me i can explain it to you again everyone need any explanation no score, thank you your score work okay. okay thank you very much thank you that's all from my side